Okay, so today uh, we're going to plot a graph with uh, acceleration equal to positive 3 meters per second squared. We're going to do all three graphs. And I'm also going to need my initial velocity, which is going to be negative 12 meters per second. And my initial position is going to be 0 meters. Now, I need these initial positions, or else my three graphs are not deterministic. So let me start off by drawing my horizontal uh, axis here. And let's start it, let's say, right about there. Or, yeah. OK. Oops. That's tough. OK. And OK. And there. Uh, that got a little messy. I'm having technical difficulties trying to draw a straight line with a ruler here. But that's my A meters per second squared. OK, now that works. Um, and then I'm going to, let's say, say this is negative 1. Or sorry, sorry, not negative. Let's go 1, 2, 3. So here's positive 3 at that point. And now I'm just going to draw a straight line like that. OK? Um, now, this is, we'll say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six. We'll pull this over a bit. Seven, eight. Notice I'm using two spaces for uh, one second. Now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to draw my like that, and that's going to be my. Um, Now, whoa, let's undo that line there. OK. Um, I'm going to actually come right here, and I want to draw a straight line. Let's see if I can do this. OK. Um, as I said, it's hard to use a ruler with this thing. Um, now. I want to be able to <coughs> say that my initial here, my initial velocity is negative 12. So in this case, uh, let's say this is So I'll say this is uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And those are negative values. OK? And we're going to go up. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. There. Now, our first point is right here at negative 12. And now we're going to try and figure out where the next point is. So if we calculate this area here, this is 1 times 3. That means uh, 1 times 3 is 3. So that means our change in velocity is positive 3. So our initial velocity was negative 12. So we can say negative 12 plus 3 equals negative 9. So we'll come over here to negative 9, which is right about there. And at one second, we're at negative 9. Then we could say, all right, what's this area? The whole from 3 to 2. So that is another. So this area here is another 3. One to one, because 2 minus 1 
times 3 is another 3. So therefore, take another 3 away from 9, and we're going to get to 6. So we'll come over here to 2 seconds, and we'll come up to 6. And we're right there. And we're going to do it again. Take away another 3 in the next second, and we're going to get to negative 3. Because negative 6 plus 3 is right there. Then at 4 seconds, okay, so the total, the total area of this is now 3 times 4, which is positive 12. So negative 12 plus 12 equals 0. That means at 4 seconds, we're going to be here at 0. OK? Um, and we'll continue this. But as you can see, we've already got our straight line. And uh, if I draw it, this is going to be hard to draw, but I'll do my best here. there is a straight line and in fact um, I kind of I kind of actually did do a great job and the reason why I didn't is because here, let's erase this for a second uh, let's see see because if I go to eight seconds here if I if I kind of pull this up and I go to eight seconds until here then um, starting from here, that's 4 on the horizontal, So, because 8 minus 4 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. That means my last point should be here. At 8 seconds, I should be up here at 12. And I did the right because I went 1, 2, 3. So above should be 1, 2, 3. So really the line should go from here. So I went too high before. So let's see if I could do it now. Nice. OK, that's much better. Um, you'll notice that the other points will be on that line as well. So this is, in fact, my v in meters per second versus T. <clears throat> now, at this point, how am I going to figure out what my my DT graph looks like? So I will again draw a straight line, but in this in this case, uh, what I want to do is I want to draw the x-axis because what I know here is that initially I'm going to be, uh, I know that my initial position is 0. Okay, and that was given here. My initial position is 0. But also know that my area, the area under the graph here, is all negative. So if this is, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. Now I know that my area is here, like for example, this area, I can change colors to uh, maybe show this. Now, how am I going to figure out what this area is? And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut it into a rectangle here and a triangle. Um, and actually, well, it should go higher up. So this intersects here at 9. So kind of disregard this line here. So this is a rectangle. So if I do the math calculations, let me change back to black. So it's a, it's a rectangle plus a triangle. And the rectangle has a width of 1 and a height of 9. Okay, so that's nine. Now this this guy here is a triangle, and it goes from nine to twelve. So it has a height of three. So it's base times height 
base times height divided by 2. That means it's 9 plus 1 and a half. That's going to give me 10.5. That means if my initial position is 0, so if I, let's say, come over here, I want, it's nice to be able to see both. So maybe I'll set my uh, origin here. Oops. Uh, let's set it here. And that's, let's say if that's 0. Now, in order to determine my vertical divisions, what I want to be able to do is say, okay, how big is this thing going to get? Well, the maximum negative area here is 4 times 12 divided by 2. So that's going to be... So I know that 4 times 12 divided by 2 is 24. So now I, I know I'm going to need 24 graduations here. So if I go, uh, for example, if I went 5, 10, 15, 20, um, if I go up by 5s, then that should be OK, because the next one's going to be uh, 25. So at this point, I haven't even put my horizontal line in yet, so I could do that. There. Now what I'm going to say is, OK, at one second, I'm at negative 10.5. So here's 10, there's uh, 12 and a half. So 10.5 is going to be somewhere around there. OK? Uh, approximately. Maybe that's more like 11. Maybe it's a little bit higher. So and my first point is here. Now for two seconds, um, for this one, I'm at, um, I think it, this was, this looks like negative 6. So this triangle here is going to be, so that area is uh, 2 times 6, which is 12. So let me kind of do my calculations over here. 2 times 6, that's the rectangle area plus the triangle, and my triangle is going to be uh, base of 2 and a height of 6 to 12 is 6. Uh, yeah, because I'm at negative 6 right there, so to 12, that's another 6. Hope I'm doing this right. And, um, but that's divided by 2, so that's going to be 12 plus 6, that's 18. So now, if I come over here and I go to 18 at 2 seconds, there's 15, uh, between 15 and that one's like 18 and a half, so we're just above that, okay? So right around there. So I've got three se three points now. I'm not going to do the three second one, but I am going to do the four second one because I know that's an easy one to do. That's just actually uh, four times twelve divided by two, which is twenty four. So if I go to twenty four here, I know it's going to be very close to about at four seconds, right about there, because that line's at twenty five. Now I know the other side's going to be symmetric and I can extend this I mean I'm kinda of being lazy here and not calculating all the other points but essentially I'm gonna be back to zero here at eight seconds the reason why I know I'm back to zero at eight seconds is because uh, so there's my eight second mark and I can put them on here so that's five six seven eight the reason I know it is, is because I know that if I look at my velocity graph and I change colors for a second just to show you like the difference, or actually let's use a different color. How about this one? I know that this area here, this blue area, 
is negative 24 and I know this area here is positive 24 so when I add those up negative 24 and positive 24 I'm gonna get to 0 so that's why I know this is at 0 so if I was to draw this these guys let me change back it's going to look something like this and again this is my uh, this is my D in meters versus time and we're gonna have something that looks like this okay so it is a parabola and I did an okay job of drawing it but essentially that's what it's going to look like so we've got our down here we've got our AT graph which we're at positive 3 it looks a little messy here but we're at at that location we're at positive 3 meters per second squared and it's constant acceleration okay but our velocity is changing and our velocity equation is linear and then our position or dt is parabolic now another thing which we can do to kind of determine uh, or verify something is we always went going up from the a to the v to the d we basically went what's the area let's figure out the value what's the area what's the value one thing I'd like to show you is what if we were to take a point uh, and let's say we pick this point here on the graph and calculate the tangent at the dt at that point. So if I was to draw a tangent here, it would look like that. Now you can see, and you should know at this point, that a horizontal line has a slope of 0. So the slope of this line equals 0. That means that at this point, if we go down to the VT graph here at 4 seconds, our value is 0. Now what this also suggests is that if we were to um, calculate the slope at a different point, let's say for example, let's take, uh, let's take this point right here and let's calculate the slope of that. So I'm going to have to draw a straight line here. Oh, I'm not doing a good job here. Let me try this again. Let's try the other direction. Nope, didn't touch the line there. Let's try again. Okay, that's not too bad. It's not touching it exactly, but as I said, it's kind of tough with, um, with, with what I'm working with here. But if I draw a triangle now here, so if I go like this, and I go like this, and so if I calculate the slope of this line, let's see if we can figure out what it would be. So what's the distance from there to there? Well, at this point, we're at here, which is, these graduations are five. Half a graduation is two and a half. So that means this point is, uh... okay, I just noticed that I messed something up a little bit. These graduations are, I kind of lost track of what the size of these. Each, each one graduation here is five. Therefore, if I wanted to go to 24, I should have gone almost down to here. So this bottom point should have been closer to down here, not up here. Um, nonetheless, it's relatively close. It should have been more, you know, like, like that instead of being so shallow. Um, so now, if I... Let's, take, let's pick a different point then. Instead of picking this point, which is basically 
uh, is no longer on there. How about I pick this point and I draw the tangent to it. Okay, and now if I draw the triangle, there's my triangle. Now, notice this is, so what are those two points? Uh, that point is five, so the slope of that line, slope is equal to rise over run. Okay, so I got to be careful here, and the reason I, I've kind of not being careful is that these numbers are actually negative, and that, 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 that'll easily make my slope incorrect. So once again, if this is negative 18.5 minus uh, negative 5 divided by, because that's this distance here, okay? and then divided by this distance here, which is the run. So now I'm gonna get, this is at about uh, 1.75, and this here is at 0.25. So now if I plug this through my calculator, so this gives me an answer of negative nine. That's the slope. Now my units for this is meters per second. And notice I took the slope here at one second. That means that if I was to go down and compare that value to my velocity here, let me pull it up a bit, at, at that location, indeed I am at nine seconds so and and of course I know I'm at nine seconds at that point because I even calculated that uh, from the acceleration right um, at one second it was right there this area here was positive 3 so negative 12 plus positive three gives me negative nine. So in fact, my slope worked out brilliantly. I was lucky I got the number pretty good. Um, sometimes when you draw your slope on the DT graph, it might not be exact because it's a bit of an art form to draw tangents, but nonetheless, uh, this worked out, okay? Because this was about you know, this was 1.75, this was 0 0.25, and this location, I think, was um, negative 18.5, and this one was negative 5. Okay? So my slope at that point matches my velocity uh, value precisely at 9 meters per second, which, by the way, um, actually negative. Okay, so I now want you to try this problem again, but this time I'm going to give you guys a different uh, set of inputs. I want your acceleration to be negative three meters per second squared. I want your initial velocity to be 12 positive 12 meters per second, and I want your initial position to be, again, zero. You should be able to, all the numbers are actually, a lot of the calculations are gonna be the same. What I really want you to focus on in this situation is, can you figure out the shape of these curves? So I'm not gonna go through the kind of laborious process of actually plotting everything as I've because I've already done but rather can you figure out the shape of these graphs from this new initial conditions pause the video and give it a shot okay so let's see if we 
can finish this off. Let's take these conditions and let's draw our graphs. Now, I'm not going to plot this. I'm just going to show you what they look like. So if we do our AT first, okay, let's say here is my acceleration in meters per second squared. And this is going to be zero. Therefore, let's say this is negative three. Then this is going to be a flat line like that. And let's say this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight seconds again. And now if we draw our VT graph, now our VT graph here, our initial velocity is going to be uh, positive 12. So let's say we go here and um, we'll say this is, uh, let's say it's 5, 10, 15, and this is negative 5, 10, negative 15. So that means positive 12 is going to be somewhere around here, okay? Um, now, we know that at after four seconds, let's kind of push this up again, we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at four seconds here, we know that uh, this total area is going to be negative 12. That means if we say positive 12 plus negative 12, well, that's going to give us 0. That means at 4 seconds, we're going to be right there. Okay, And that's for the, the V in meters per second. And then we also know that another negative 12 is going to cause us to go positive 12 plus negative 24, which gives us negative 12. So because this whole entire area would be negative 24, 3 times 8, and then since we're starting up at positive 12 up here, that means we're going to get down to negative 12. And so uh, that would be somewhere around here at 8 seconds. And so now we can tell that this is, in fact, going to be a, I, I, I wanted to go through this point, but as I said, it's kind of difficult to draw on this tablet. But that's a straight line, and that's the shape of it. Now if I go to my D, if I draw my DT here, and let's say this is 0, OK? Uh, I know that um, at this point, time 0, I'm at 0. And also, the other thing which I know is that if I change colors here for a second, I know that this area here, that's a, pos that's a positive area. But it's going to be equal to this area here. Uh, let me pull that up a bit. And that's going to be a negative area. So they're going to be equal and opposite. So therefore, I know that at 
eight seconds here, I'm going to be back at zero. And I also know that at this point in time, so my total area here is, again, going to be 4 times 12 divided by 2, which is 24. So if I kind of scroll up here uh, and I say 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, at time uh, 0, or sorry, not time 0, time 4, I'm going to be at 24. So I'm going to be right around here. Okay, that means that my graph is going to look like this. Uh, it's supposed to be a parabola, but nonetheless, uh, I think you get the gist of what it's supposed to look like. And so that's my dt, that's my vt, and then that's my at for these initial conditions. Okay? See you next time. So the one thing that I forgot to add is that I really want to make this clear is that this this area uh, going when we're going in this direction where I say area is equal to I think I used the word value before and I think that's incorrect. I think I'd prefer to describe it as change because we really need the initial position. So you notice this entire area here from you know eight from zero to eight, this is this is twenty-four. Now of course this area, right, uh, is three meters per second squared times 8 seconds, which gives us 24 meters per second. Now, that means the change, so this value here is the change in the graph above. So therefore, if the delta V is equal to 24, by the way, it's negative, just to be clear here. This was negative 3 and this is negative 24. If the change, if the delta V is equal to 24 meters per second, then in order to find the final position, right, final minus initial delta equals, so therefore final is equal to delta plus initial. That's why I'm going negative 24 plus and our initial was 12. And when I do that, I get it's equal to negative 12, which is my final position. You see, so I think the rule of going from area in the graph below to the graph above, that, that produces the change in the graph above. So we definitely need the initial position in order to calculate the final position, or velocity in this case. And of course, the same thing works again when we go up, right? Like, for example, when we start from zero, it, it's not as evident. But let's say, for example, if we start from four seconds here, then this area here is four times, so eight minus four is four, times uh, negative 12 divided by 2, that's uh, 24. That means that our delta here is negative 24 meters. And that makes sense, right? Because this area is negative, you can't see it all, there we go, that area is negative 24, because this here was negative 12, right? So 8 minus 4 times 12 divided by 2, uh, that's 24. Now, that means that delta D here is 24. But if our initial position was 
24. That means our final position is going to be 0. Okay? Because delta is final minus the initial, and so we go final is equal to delta plus initial, negative 24 plus 24 gives us 0. I just wanted to make that clear. Thank you.